I'm going to make this little video uh, about uh, inspecting a front bevel gear bearing on a Kawasaki. Uh, this is a main streak, but I think any of the 1500, 1600s with a dry shaft is uh, all the same. But uh, before you can get this side cover off, you're going to have to come down here and take this shifter mechanism off because it, the cover won't come off without on there. So you got to remove this shifter mechanism, take out all these bolts, pull this side cover off, and about right here in the area where my finger is right now, there's going to be a cap. It's probably about a two and a quarter inch round cap. It's going to look like a bronze, maybe a little bit of a copper collar cap. And on the outside edge of it, you're going to see rubber. It's got a rubber coating on that cap, and that's what makes the seal because that's just uh, pressed in. Uh, but you can take a flathead screwdriver of such and uh, pry that off. Just be careful not to damage it as you're uh, getting it off there to do an inspection. But uh, you'll see a large nut behind that, and that is actually your bevel gear. And to inspect that, if you have any movement from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock or 3 o'clock to uh, 9 o'clock, uh, that bearing is bad. Uh, so if you have any uh, side to side or up or down movement, that bearing is bad. Now, it's okay to have a little bit of uh, in and out, a little bit of in play on a bearing. Uh, that's uh, normal, but absolutely no side to side or up and down movement. Uh, that's a sign the bearing is bad. Uh, before you do that, also you can check. Of course, you're going to lose your oil. Would be to come down and... Uh, Take your, uh, of course, you should know where this is at if you've been doing your, uh, uh, right here is there's a screen behind this nut right here on the bottom. That is your pre-filter. That has got a screen, a uh, mess screen in it to catch debris before it goes to your filter. Take this out and get you a small container of kerosene. And when you pull this screen out, uh, dip that down in that, uh, that screen down in that small container of kerosene and shake it around. If you're retrieving metal flakes, uh, uh, you're definitely got a bearing. It's going bad. And more than likely, I'm going to say that 90%, I'm mind percent sure, it's that front bevel gear bearing because these are known for them to fail. Uh, but if you're hearing uh, a whine when you're on deceleration and as you're on deceleration, you uh, pull the clutch in, and it stops uh, more than likely that's that bearing I will tell you this job can be done but it's not for the faint of heart uh, it's a pretty big job uh, the back tires got to come off the rear ends got to come off the back tire the dry shafts got to be removed uh, you got to remove the seat got to remove the gas tank all the hoses and everything up top all the clips holding the hoses and wiring you're going to have to take and open them clips up because you're going to have to make slack because the rear motor mount bolt has got to come out. And if you don't want to remove the engine, which you don't have to remove the engine, the book will tell you do. But I've did this. Trust me, you don't have to remove the engine. Is You'll take this rear motor mount out and you'll jack slowly jack the rear of this engine up. And as you're jacking, you won't be looking. And of course, this gas tank will be off. You want to watch your wires and everything because you got your fuel injection wires and all that. You don't want to, you don't want to pull them real tight and, and uh, fray the wires or mess a hose up. But all these hoses up on top of this cylinder, them are going to have to be pulled out and down because this cylinder cover, head cover, is going to be touching your frame right here. You're going to jack this up until it gets against the frame, and you're still just barely going to have enough room for that be front bevel gear assembly is you're gonna to have to pull it out and kind of cock it in an angle and pull it out. You'll barely have enough room to work at that housing assembly out there. But uh, it took me about 10 hours to do this. Of course, that was uh, all my chrome. I uh, wrapped in uh, cloths and drop cloth. The exhaust has got to come off. I wrapped all my exhaust and drop cloth, marked all the bolts, bagged them, and uh, Took my time, made sure nothing got scratched or lost or 
anything like that but it took me 10 hours i've never did it before of course there might be guys out there that you know is a little faster but i did take my time made sure nothing got scratched it took 10 hours to disassemble it 10 hours to reassemble it and it took about three hours to uh, actually install the bearing uh check the uh backlash on the gears uh and uh do the cleaning clean clean it clean it all up and everything uh but uh it's not like i said it's not just for anybody to do i would if you do not have mechanical skills and understand uh stuff like that do not attempt this trust me you do not want to attempt this uh, but I called around at shops, uh, cheapest quote I got on this, and that was just to do the bearing. And uh, it was uh, $800, and it can go all the way up to $1,500. Uh, there is a couple specialty tools that you need to do this. Don't try to do it without that gear holder, that bevel gear holder, because the only way to do it was to wedge something in the gears, and you end up going to tear the bearing up, putting it in a bind. They make a special holder. Uh, you can, uh, comment and I'll give you the part number and everything if you, uh, need that. But there's also a free download. Uh, you can download a service manual on this and it'll walk you through the steps of doing it. Uh, please, all your big bolts that hold the gears on, them are one-time used bolts. Do not skip that part because they're, the, the threads kind of, uh, they're a one-time use bolt and they have to be replaced. You say so you're going to need the bolt you take off. You're going to need a gasket. You're going to need the $20 bearing. Uh, the biggest part of this job is just taking everything apart. You're going to lose your rear end fluids. You're going to need to replace your rear end fluids. You're going to have to take your uh, heater hose off, your way well, your radiator hose is off. You're going to lose your, your uh, coolant. You're going to have to replace your coolant and, of course, uh, your oil. But... If you retrieve any shavings in that pre-screen, flush the engine out best you can. And I would recommend, like I did, I uh, got some cheap oil. Uh, I started when I got it done. I started the bike up, let it run for about five minutes. I just dumped it, uh, flushed it out a couple times. I changed my oil three times, like that, until I absolutely didn't receive any shavings. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, comment and I'll respond as quick as I can. Thank you.